Hey, Antonio here at the Rock Live Podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode. We are having such a great time as we break down our ser sermon rewind week by week, going through the sermon topics. We've had such a great time. Today, we are going to be top talking about the subject of tithing. That's right. Don't run. Don't press any buttons. Stay where you're at. We're going to see what the Bible says. We're going to see what it means for our lives and how we can be blessed by this. This is not a negative thing, uh, and, and really the importance of seeing what this is in Scripture. So I know Pastor Dan did such a great job. Pastor Dan, how Thank are you, you today? Yeah, doing good, doing really well. Man, it was really such a great time over the weekend, and we were just talking off camera about some of the feedback, and I know that was really good. But a quick question, Pastor Dan, random thought. Okay. Are you a wallet carrier? Do you? Yeah, I am. Okay, a like full-on wallet. Yes, I, I carry business cards and so cash I've I've and... I've tried over the years to reduce the size of it because yeah. there was a period of time where it was like um, you know I I'd heard that people were getting back problems from sitting on their wallets in their yeah. car and stuff yeah, like yeah. that so I I often have my wallet in my front pocket for that reason uh, and then phone goes in and out yes but then um uh you know just having that big old brick up in your pocket up here is never never yeah. looks good so I've tried over the years to reduce that. And, uh, you know, that, that was getting rid of things like gift cards that were just sitting there that I was waiting to yep, go. Yep. But then the problem is, is that if you don't realize you're, you're out and you see a place, you're like, oh, I got a gift card there. And then you're like, dang, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I left it at home because I didn't want my wallet to be yeah. so fat. So, yeah, I've slimmed it down over the years. But, um, but yeah, I still carry. Now, are you because for a while I was not a wallet guy at all. I had on the phone, there was the attachment mm -hmm. that you could have just put your cards. cards. Yeah. And I, a lot of Apple Pay. I don't know if you're an Apple Pay guy. I was I just using my started watch it, or the Apple Pay. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because it's becoming a lot more common. But some I people heard are it's just safer like, too. When I do, people are like, "Oh my gosh, what is that?" Or I've even done my watch. And yeah. I'll just kind of, kind of. Sometimes I'm finding myself. Our, our CFO Adam, he does the watch, and actually he was he's a runner, so he does marathons oh, and yes. things like that. Yeah. And so uh, he'll often like be out on a run and be like, "Oh, I don't have my wallet," but then he's like, "Oh, my watch." Yes, it's you know, saves so he's you. able to buy some water yeah. or something like that when he needs it. It really does. It it saves you. And and again, switching back to the wallet, no wallet. When, you know, skinny jeans were in for a while, and so that would be that bulge I didn't yeah. like. But now baggier jeans are coming back in, so maybe I can go back to the So funny story front. in the 90s uh, when baggy jeans first <laughs> came first out. first time. We, we had it first, y'all. <laughs> so you guys are a bunch of Jenko copycats. Jenko jeans. Remember oh, Jenko? my gosh, man. Interstate. <laughs> Anchor blue beyond baggy. Interstate. Yep. Interstate. You yes. remember that? Yeah, yes. We, and, and listen, we didn't go to the fancy stores. Yes. We went to the swap meet yes. to get that stuff, Indoor man. swap meets. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, were the, what was the name of that? Oh, gosh, that other brand. There was like the uh, Ben Davis. I was going to say the Gorilla one, Ben Davis. Cross Colors. Cross Colors, yes. See, these are all man in, indoor. There was a commercial. I don't know if you remember that there was this commercial. My whole family, we used to talk about it. It's like, did you get that from the mall? No, we got it from the Riverside Discount Store. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like this commercial That's for so the funny. indoor mall, which where you could get your. Probably on Channel 3. <laughs> yeah. And anybody who knows, knows, right? Well, if you know, <laughs> if you, you, know, know. you know. That's true. Well, yeah. No, that that was the so, topic. So the reason why that sparked, yes. you, you know, you're talking about putting things in your pocket. Oh, yeah. I had a friend whose jeans were so baggy that he took our science book and put it in his pocket. That's how baggy uh, his jeans yes. were. Yes, yeah. Literal, literal, like, textbook, yeah. you know, about that thick. Yeah. And was like, hey, guys, whoosh, you know, and just put it right there in his pocket. And they had the 20-inch bottoms. Oh, man, Remember the 20-inch yeah. bottoms? That, Crazy. That, you know, Anchor Blue, which was later... What did it get called? It used to be called. Yeah, you'd get that at Miller's Outpost. Miller's Outpost, then to Anchor Blue. And Anchor Blue, and then yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't allowed to wear Beyond Baggy. No. I, my, you know, my, I, my dad didn't want me looking like a cholo, so. Yeah, like, well, I mean, I, your dad's an attorney, so yeah, and he you know, that's you know he had to deal with that. Got to keep want, it classy. I, exactly. I don't want you. I see all these cholo guys, and anyways, I, I thank you later, Dad. But. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> saving these from some embarrassing pictures surfacing. Yes, that's true. At my, uh, you know, birthdays and and I never did the bangs. You remember when the rebels had like oh, the bangs, yeah, man. and yeah. it was just a shaved head and just the bangs. Just, just the bangs was whoosh, yeah. straight down the back. But I yeah. did do the puka shells. Did you do puka shells? No, I, I couldn't get into that. I, I did have a ponytail. And I mean, I, had I was a rock. Tips. Did you do bleach tips? I had bleach tips. There are so probably a couple pictures out there. Okay. Good thing we don't live in the era where it's on our phones. Because those yeah, just, no, that would know. be on the internet. Yeah. I, I'm very thankful that social media came out after I was a teenager <laughs> because, man, the stupidity that would have come off of my feed, uh, you know, I, yeah. I don't know that I could pastor as I do today right. <laughs> if people really knew the teenager that I was, man, it was bad. It was by God's grace. Oh, seriously. We have a group chat with some of my friends from high school yeah. that every now and then they post stuff and I'm just like, they're still the same yeah. guy. But, and you look at those pictures, 
you really are convinced you're so cool. Oh man. Like in the like no one's gonna convince you otherwise. And so now I look at our teenage boys in their poses and I'm like, oh, these guys are gonna laugh later because yeah. they're yeah. Ser- they're dead serious. Oh man. But I can laugh at them like you guys are clowns because <laughs> you'll one day see. Someday you're gonna look at yourself <laughs> and say, I was not hard. I was not mean. Uh, I was <laughs> very, yeah, no, very I, blessed. <laughs> Very blessed, yeah. Oh, man, oh, man. Well, we are on the topic of tithing and yeah. generosity and giving, and I, I love it because the the series, again, as it pertains to your world, it is a finance series. And you yeah. said something, uh, and I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got And it somewhat, it somewhat is an overview of what you said. Or, sure. Uh, uh, but God's plan for provision is stewardship. Yeah. And I love that because... It's it's not like God plan provision is I just you wake up and so there's money in your account no. or there's food on your there's table. There's no golden goose. There's a yeah. it's it's stewardship. So he always has a plan, mm-hmm. right? His intent is to provide for the children of Israel, and, and we think it is different than the yes the manna days. You literally would wake up and the plan for provision was you wake up and there's food on the ground. Well, but let's talk about manna for a second. Yeah. There still was stewardship involved. They Come had on. to go and gather. Yes. And there was a day that they had to remember what day it was. Yes. And they had to gather a double portion on that mm-hmm. day. And then they had to rest and not gather on a day. Yes. And all of that was their stewardship of that. And and it talks about how they didn't properly steward the manna yes. by trying to store it up for the next day. And it stunk and it grew worms, right? right? And, and then, uh, you know, it, it talks about people gathering sticks on the Sabbath mm-hmm. that were, you know, th- there's there's all kinds of stewardship principles that yeah. as we look at those things, they still had to steward what was given to them. And, and I thought and about they had to that, cook. Right. Because so if you were greedy or if you had like kind of like a lack mentality and tried yeah. to do a bunch, gather more in fear that then it would go bad. Right. Which is like, oh, man, there's uh, there. You're right. It was there was laden with the principle throughout. So that has not. Oh my gosh! It's almost like God doesn't change. Which wow, you went. Hey. <laughs> what do you know? Which about is that? a big verse. I know uh, you, you. You talked about that. Uh, tell me, Pastor Dan. You know, in a topic like this, um, because there is so many thoughts, so many feelings, and even emotions that get mm-hmm. involved uh, when it comes to just finances, but specifically what we talked about this week, which is tithing and giving to church. Uh, and there's a lot of teaching out there, yeah. social media pastors and platforms and ministries. Yeah. Um, some good and some we I would consider not as good mm-hmm. um, or not as truth telling. <laughs> um, how, how much of that thought goes into, again, your preparation? You know, how how much you feel like you want to unteach people or kind of correct thoughts or bring in again, because. It, it gone are the days where you're the sole teacher of any congregation sure. where there's, and so you know it's kind of like you're shooting your shot, but you're giving the truth, right? Am I yeah. making sense? Yeah, I think um, you know for me, I think more than than uh, anything, I'm aware mm-hmm. of that fact, right? And um, I, I learned long ago, uh, I don't even know where I learned it, but just that when you're trying to um, teach on a subject. Uh, you know, obviously, there's going to be some element of of what you're talking about where you're going to unteach so that mm-hmm. you can reteach. There, and there are certain subjects that you you simply have to do that. You have to address fallacy. You have to address error and uh, and erroneous teaching um, in order to relay the foundation. You know, in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about uh, that God anointed Jeremiah to to tear down, to uproot. Mm-hmm to plant and to build, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we do have to tear down what was already built in order to rebuild, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and and that would make sense with the building or anything like that. Um, You know, if there's a wall that's that's faulty and falling over, you have to tear that wall down, get rid of it, and then redig foundations, re-pour, re-put your posts, all that kind of stuff, right? So so there is an element of that. However, in in teaching subjects, especially with how much time we have, Mm -hmm. I'm painfully aware of the time <laughs> because for any subject there's far more than uh you know maybe next week i'll bring the number of books that i study yeah. from because yeah, yeah. it's it's an impressive yeah. stat yeah. but um uh you know there's far more to teach on the subject than we have time in a you know 45 minute 50 minute message right. that we do um to to deliver the subject so i learned early on that rather than spend more time tearing down mm-hmm. you know um we, we might bust through a wall with a with a bulldozer, you know, yeah. and just you know start start building, you know, yeah. 
and and really when there is a counterfeit rather than teach on the counterfeit and this was uh, banking and that sort of a yep. thing right they don't teach about the counterfeit they teach about the the real mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. true because if you know the real and the true then you'll be able to spot a counterfeit so yeah. i spent a lot of time focusing more on the truth than i do on the air yeah um, you know, and, and obviously anyone can go out there and, and do an internet search on the word tithe. You can go to Wikipedia right. and find out about the tithe. Now, anyone can edit that. Yes. You know what I mean? And so, um, I've even thought about editing right. it, you know, <laughs> let me that, just fix this. Yeah. Real quick. Let me just fix these guys theology because they obviously don't know what they're talking about. Um, you know, but there, there are some great scriptures and, and support and that sort of a thing. Um, I think that if, if you were to get a well-balanced view, there are, uh, different sides to this story, different ways to teach this. And obviously in the New Testament, the, the word tithe itself is not mm -hmm. used that often. Mm -hmm. And because we're under a new covenant, because there's a new law, that sort of a thing, because the tithe was under the law, um, you know, we did address this in the, yes. in the message. That yeah. Many people say that uh, it's, it's no longer applicable to the church. Right. I get that. And even Jesus, you think about it, he came as one under the law mm -hmm. to fulfill the law. So yeah. is the tithe fulfilled in Christ? I would say you could make a case for that, right? Yeah. But then what do you do with Abraham and Jacob, yeah. who did it outside of the law? Yeah. What do you do with the book of Hebrews that talks about the tithe? Yeah. And, and Jesus himself saying, don't neglect it. Yeah. Now, he was saying that to people who were under the law, but he talked about justice and mercy and, yeah. and love, right? So then are those no longer applicable yeah. to us today? Yeah. Because they were under the law? Right. I mean, think about it. Justice and love and mercy were commanded under the law. Mm -hmm. We were we were commanded to be merciful to the poor under the law. Are we no longer doing that under the New Testament? Yeah. There's not a lot said about that in the New Testament. Yeah. Now, yeah, it says to share, and it says, it says to be benevolent, and uh, to give the sacrifice of good works, and those types of things. So there are things that say that, and even the apostles, talking to the Apostle Paul, we want you to remember the poor, the very thing that I was happy to do, right? right? Yeah. So there are mentions of it, but it's not like commanded and foundational mm -hmm. you take mm -hmm. care of the poor it, yeah. it's more just mentioned that this is a part of who we are yeah and i think that when we look at the tithe I, I think that there's a lot of stuff especially because we're coming from a jewish background our faith has jewish roots right that when we look at this is kind of just who we are mm -hmm. it, it's almost assumed that we're going to be generous right it's almost assumed that you're going to be strategic yeah uh, and and i think that god didn't want to limit his church to a tithe because I, I mentioned this in the message as well. Under the old covenant, if it, under the law they prescribed ten percent, yes. right? Yep. Then under the new covenant, we're under a better covenant with right. better promises. Right? Shouldn't our giving be better? Right. That that should be base level. That should be the starting blocks right. of where a believer says, "Well, I'm going to tithe, but man, I'm ready for an offer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for a special project. I'm right. ready for generosity. I'm ready for the poor. Bring it on, God, right. because the more we shovel out, the more He shovels in. Yeah. And God has a bigger shovel. And I, sometimes that feels like a catch twenty two, Pastor Dan, because yeah, you know, you get in trouble for saying bring your ten percent from from doubters or people. But if you were really say kind of like the new though you're saying, bring it all, then you're, you're oh you, you want everything you know you. And, and, well, and let's <laughs> examine who I'm in trouble with. Right, right. Come on. Who am yeah. I in trouble with at that point? Right. It's people who don't want to give. Yes. Why do you have a problem with giving? Yeah. Why do you have a problem with generosity? Yeah. You. I don't want to be told how. Oh, so so you don't want to be told. That's usually what rebellious people say. Right. I don't want to submit to leadership. Yeah. Well, if leadership is corrupt, okay, am I corrupt then? Right. For encouraging you to give? Am well, I maybe, for encouraging you to be blessed? May, maybe speak to that, because I think some of these questions, Pastor Dan, do, do come from that. What would you say to the listener who, again, attaches themselves very quickly to these teachings, um, what we would identify as false teachings, because they are coming almost from a place of hurt. They've, they've uh, experienced or been parts of ministries uh, that maybe abused finances, or mm -hmm. there wasn't transparency, or like you mentioned you know, they see the pastor in their Armani or in a, a fancy car when the rest of the congregation was struggling financially. And they right away see the abuse and then they go, oh, here's this minister calling it out or saying I shouldn't have to give. Sure. Um, m maybe help someone again, because I, I just, you know, thank you, Holy Spirit, I feel that for the people that are coming from that and they yeah. are kind of trying to rebuild from and, and I know I experienced this as a child, uh, as a teenager. We were at, at, at the church I was at. There was this traveling minister that came through, and I feel like there's this many people supposed to give X amount of dollars, and I feel like there's this amount of people supposed to give X amount of dollars, and I felt compelled in my spirit to give, which at as a teenager it was a lot of money to me, 
and I gave it, and we found out later that it was not an upright minister. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of feel cheated a bit. Yeah. But the lesson that my dad taught me in that was like, you didn't give to that man or that ministry, you gave to God. Absolutely. Um, but there is that sense of, you know, yeah. my, my flesh felt upset, offended, yeah, hurt. For sure. So, um, and we've had those things. Uh, Pastor Jim used to tell the story early, early on in The Rock. A guy came in who got people not just to give for an, an offering, but to give towards a business mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. promising a big return. Uh, he was a charlatan. He took everybody's money and left. Mm-hmm. You know, and definitely, um, you know, you mentioned something, false teaching. I think, um, you know, on the inside of me, I want to I wanna delineate between two different categories yeah. here. One is false teachers, right? There are people who are wolves in sheep's clothing who are preying on the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible calls them savage wolves will rise up from among you, not sparing the flock. Right. They're after your money. Um, they're after your soul. They're after uh, something, and they're false. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not of God, right. right? There definitely are those people. I think on the other side of that, though, there's another category of people that um, I want everyone to be aware of, and that's just people who are in error. Mm. And that doesn't mean they're a false teacher. It doesn't right. mean that they're they're not going to heaven. It doesn't mean that they're preying on people. Right. There are errors, and I think that there's, in, in any subject, right. whether it's holiness, um, whether it's the Holy Spirit and the expressions of the gifts, mm-hmm. uh, there's, there's definitely, uh, if you picture it as a road, there's a ditch on either side. Yep. And when, when we look at finances, it's a road, right? We're walking this walk of life. We're walking this walk of giving and generosity and what yeah. God wants us to steward, right? Now, in, in one side, there's the error of overemphasis of finances, mm-hmm. which we've seen. Yes. Definitely. And yeah. many people say they're a false teacher because they've overemphasized. Right. But then you listen to their teachings on salvation and, mm-hmm. um, you know, holy living and the things of God, and they're, they're right in the middle of the path. They're, right. they're where they need to be. But they've overemphasized and gotten into error. Yeah in this area of ministry for whatever reason, right. you know, financial pressure or greed or covetousness yeah. can come in. Now, yeah. the preachers, all of us, are men and mm-hmm. women, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to have sin that we battle in the flesh, and yeah. so can we get into error? Absolutely. You know, so um, sometimes people get excited about a teaching, and then they take it further than they wow. need to take it, you mm-hmm. know? And so definitely finances and stewardship can be one of those areas that is a snare, it is a trap. The enemy will yeah. use it, right? Because it is a root of all kinds of evil. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's where we have to be aware of that as ministers, that we don't get in the air of overemphasis, right? And I think that's where a lot of people have, have started to say, well, the American gospel or the prosperity gospel, yeah. Or, yeah. you know, that sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, but when it, I, I have a hard time with, uh, now, American gospel, yeah, I get that. You yeah. know, um, American has nothing to do with that. The good news is the good news, no right. matter what. But when we have a prosperity, it should just be the gospel of Jesus, but prosperity is a beautiful word. Mm-hmm. It's a Bible word. Right. And, and where, where the other ditch is, is where we underemphasize it, where mm-hmm. we never teach on it, or right. we teach that teaching on it at all right. is erroneous. Yeah. That's not what we see in the Bible. Right. That's not what we see in the life of Jesus. That's not what we see in the life of Paul or the mm-hmm. apostles right. or the church. Right. And, and, and with that, I mean, let's just get real. It takes money to do ministry. Right. We, we still, even though we're citizens of heaven and part of this kingdom— we still live in this natural corporeal world that operates through buying and selling, and so the church has to operate within that right. context uh, and use the things. And, and even Jesus said, "Use material wealth, right? Yep. Gain friends. Do, do what you have to do to use this that you've been given and steward it properly." Uh, and that was the parables. That's why we we cite the parables because the parables are more than just salvation messages, yep. Yep. right? Uh, parables are about uh, multiplication and using what you have in order to build this mm-hmm. kingdom. Mm-hmm. And I believe that that kingdom is built with people, and it takes money to right. reach people, whether it's marketing, uh, whether it's having an outreach where you cook hot yeah. dogs. Those yeah. hot dogs cost money at the store. Right. Right. You know, unless you have a manager that's a Christian that says, hey, I want to bless the work, and God yeah. supernaturally provides, which he can do. Right. God doesn't need money to yeah. to operate in this world he right. created. Yeah. However, most of the time, you don't get manna falling from heaven. Right. Most of the time, you get money in your hand that if you'll steward it properly, then I can go and buy a hot dog that I can reach someone in a park, right. you know, and, right. and tell them about the message. And so I think that's where those two ditches, overemphasis or underemphasis, and when, you know, I, I see this more on the um, underemphasis side than I do on the overemphasis yeah. side, when the underemphasis says, hey, you shouldn't be teaching about that at all, then mm-hmm. you cut out the solid teaching that's in the middle, which is where we endeavor to live. Well, and, and I, that's why I appreciate, again, it, maybe you just, this is the first week you heard in, in the finance series. You got to check out week one of the finance series. 
uh, because you didn't just jump right in to give to the church yep. or, tie, you know, you're setting this up. And you did talk about why we would even talk about finances at all, because a third of the New Testament or As a, a, quarter a, New Testament. a quarter of the New Testament, a third of Jesus's teachings, a third of the parables, a third of the parables. Yes. Um, which we know Jesus did not teach outside of a parable. At the, Once he taught on a parable, he's like, you're not going to hear me teach outside of a parable. I will teach in parables, right? Yeah. So th- this is what Jesus are talking about, this area of stewardship and mm-hmm. finances. And so we see it in Scripture. There is precedent. There, yeah. So the other side of not teaching about it, so we're just going to cut out a third of Jesus' teaching. Imagine if you did that on another Crazy. topic. And, it's, and it is because, in my opinion... Because of it's this like tiptoey, not popular topic that people want to talk about. And I and I understand that. But imagine if preachers didn't talk about uncomfortable things. Well, you know, and it's funny because, you know, we're talking about social media and we're talking about uh, teachers who are in error. And there are people who say things that sound very smart mm-hmm. and they say it very mm-hmm. boldly. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, because of that, a lot of people say, well, that that sounds reasonable. That sounds wise. And then with the, you know, the flesh involved and things like that, like I said, if there is a hint of that in us, yeah, man, I don't like giving, or I could sure use this somewhere else. Yeah. I really like what they're saying about that. You know, I, I don't have to give. Listen, mm-hmm. you don't have to give. Right. New covenant. My goodness. Yeah. All things are free for me to do, but not all things are beneficial. Right. right? right. All things are permissible. Yeah. Not everything's beneficial. Right. Yeah. You, you can eat whatever you want to eat. Yeah. But if you eat the wrong things, yep. they're going to harm your body. Yeah. It's not beneficial for you. You know, yeah. that's the context of those scriptures. And so, um, you know, the same thing with, with any any area of the teaching is that you don't have to do it, yeah, you know. Right. Can you sin and go to heaven? Sure, the blood of Jesus covers that. But if you take that to the extreme, where are you going to yep. take that yeah. to, right? Yeah. And so if we willfully sin after we have the knowledge, then then we're trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot. So that's why we that's why we keep ourselves. Yeah. But then when it comes to things like giving and generosity and things like that, that honestly, even even tithers have a problem with sometimes. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah. my goodness, you know, I'm blessed, yeah. but these financial struggles that I'm going through, I sure could use some more. Right. And so when we see the tithe is holy, we know we'll never touch that, but then our generosity wanes. Yeah. You know, my life too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where Oh, the church birthday's coming up. How much are we going to give, honey? Right. Well, we got all these bills, and all of a sudden our offering reduces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing sinful about right. that. But where is our heart? Where's our where's where's yeah. where's our prayer time with God? God, what do you want us to give? Not not just what mm-hmm. it seems reasonable or right for me to give. Right. Obviously, we're going to calculate. We're going to look at what we have available to us. Yeah. But if God increases that number, We've got to believe and go for it mm-hmm. and, and recognize that God will take care of the rest as we steward it, yeah. as he puts it in our hand. And so, you know, we look at those things where someone listening to someone on the Internet uh, that's speaking boldly and loudly and, and very clear and concise, oh, yeah, they're so right. But, you know, in the book of Ecclesiastes, I think it is, um, I'd have to look it up, it's either Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, it says that the whispers of the wise should be heard more than the shouts of fools. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, many times the people who are teaching on finances the right things, they're not out there calling other ministers out. They're not they're not wasting time right. with the foolishness Good. of the world. Yeah. They're just simply teaching solid biblical finances and, and moving on. Yeah. And the people that are doing it are getting blessed and going, the proof's in the pudding, right? And, and, I, and I, I think that's... Brilliant way to put it, which is a, is a good segue, Pastor Dan. We we talked about you mentioned like sure you you don't have to, and we talked about the Malachi scriptures. Yeah. Um, and let's let's visit that because you know that those those are scriptures that I've seen on both sides either for or now bringing teaching. Not you, see this is why it's Old Testament and this was talking about the literal storehouse for this and that mm-hmm. and then going into now the curse part because this is again this is the religious aspect within us wants to like well what, what curse what does that mean and right. and what does that look like and I'm free in Jesus but I'm cursed and let, let delve into that more for us yeah Patrick. I mean we didn't have time to go in that I graced over it quickly um, you know obviously when we look at the Bible uh, there's a, a classic example of this when Balak a king comes to Balaam, who is mm-hmm. a prophet, right. and he wants him to pronounce a curse over Israel. Right. Uh, God won't let him go at first. Um, you know, the story, uh, he ends up finally going after a while, after yeah. pleading with God again and again, which shows us that if we if we pray for the wrong thing long enough, God will give us over to our sinful right. desires, because right. we know that the prophet was mad. He was yep. crazy, right? Yep. Um, and, so, uh, and so as he's going, 
an angel's getting ready to kill him, and his donkey sees the angel and and saves his life three times, yeah. right? And eventually, God gives the the beast speech, and so it talks to him, and he's having this conversation with the donkey like it's completely normal, yeah, yeah, you know. But obviously, there's there's spiritual things and supernatural things going on in that moment that that we may not understand, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. One of those crazy stories of the Bible, right? But uh, you know, he goes up and he says, "I can only say that which the Lord tells me to say." You can't curse what God has blessed. Right. And so in that, he even, I mean, a mad prophet, this is, this is a, a, a crazy prophet, right. declares a truth that we find out about Jesus, that the star will guide them, right? Yep. That we, we, we literally see yep. these prophecies about Jesus come from this man who is in error and who, who is doing the wrong thing. That's good. That's good. So here he is, right? And, and he declares this, and he can't curse Israel, but we find out later something happened, right? The story in Numbers, and and, uh, and as we go through it, you don't get the whole picture. Uh, you find out that later on they found him with a, a certain group mm-hmm. of people, and, and they kill him at that time. Yeah. Um, but you find out later on in the New Testament that this prophet was mad, that he, he was restrained by the voice of a donkey, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you also find out that be, what he did was he told the king, listen, I can't curse them, but I can teach you how to get them cursed. Mm. Here's how. Yeah. You get them to get themselves out from underneath the covering yep. of God's blessing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're exposed to yeah. right. the evil yeah. of the wicked one, right? Right. So what does he get them to do? He brings women right. into the camp. They start to party. Right. They start to have sex with them, right? Right. There's a crazy story about one of the sons of Aaron goes with a spirit and he runs two people through while they're in the act, right? right. And because of his zeal... The priesthood goes through his lineage for the Lord because he went and did something yeah. extreme in that yeah. moment to, yeah. to to stop something that was going on. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, crazy stories of the Bible. Here we go, man. It's, yeah. I don't know why people don't, you know, when this they make their no movies, they try and embellish the scriptures. <laughs> stop embellishing. It's already it's crazy. Wild enough. Oh, man. I mean, like, that would be, yeah. you know, PG-13 at yeah, least. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> with some of the stuff that's going on there. But, um, yeah, I mean, the Bible is definitely R-rated sometimes. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we, you know, you look at those things. But why do I say all that? Because he said, I, I can't curse them. Right. So you can't curse what's blessed. But I can get them cursed if I can get them right. to sin. Right. I think the principle is the same with our finances. And, and this is really what God is talking about. And if you look up Malachi chapter 3 and like the Amplified or some of the right. other translations, you'll find this nuance brought out. Um, where really what he's saying is you're cursed with a curse, not because God will curse you. Right. If you look in the Genesis account, where did the curse come from, right? right. God never cursed man. Right. Never. You never see God say, I'm cursing you, Adam, or I'm cursing you, Eve. Who, who gets cursed? The devil gets cursed, right. and the ground gets cursed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the ground is very important for us to understand, because where was Adam and Eve's provision coming from? Right. The ground. The ground, right? Yep. There were seeds that were planted yep. that were producing trees mm-hmm. and vines yep. and fruit, wheat, mm-hmm. right? That sort of thing. Because now, all of a sudden, when the ground is cursed and when the world is now submitted to fallen, yep. uh, this fallen state, yep. where Adam and Eve were the caretakers, but now they've handed over the least to Satan through the usurping of authority, yep. right? By, by submitting themselves to sin. When they're in that fallen state, what happens? The ground is cursed, and by the sweat of your brow... Yeah, it too. Right, oh, I got to pull weeds. Thanks, Adam. Thorns and thistles, right, <laughs> are going to be produced. Yeah, and, and by the sweat of your brow, you will eat mm-hmm. what? Yep, bread. Right. right now, bread has always been viewed as a provision. That's why the manna from heaven was bread. Yep. Right, man yep. should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. So even the provision for what our life force it's a, is—it's a slang too. We give him that bread, the, <laughs> and, and that's significant, right? right. Because if I'm going to put bread on the table, right. I need what? The bread. Money, yeah. right? I need yeah. I need this money to put bread on the table for my family. Right. So it's a sustainer. It's a life force. It's it's a provision. Very important. Now, okay, you're cursed with a curse, right? Why? Because you you've robbed me. So because you've robbed me, you've taken yourself out from underneath the, the covenant covering yeah. blessing of God, yeah. that now you're out from underneath that you've cursed yourself, right. really is what he's saying. So you're is it safe to say it's not like a curse is upon you, rather you're lifted from the covering? I think that's more accurate as far as the way that I interpret right. the scripture, because, okay, so here when they bring the tithe to God, it's his, right? It's right. holy. Okay, so I'm not holding on to that which is holy. Yeah. I'm not robbing or cheating God, yeah. like we saw in the scriptures. So God hears what's yours, and what happens is the blessing of God right. is upon that ninety mm-hmm. percent. Now, yeah. 
the Apostle Paul in the New Testament said, if, if the tithe is holy, then the whole thing is holy. Right. Right? It's all God's. That's why we yeah. say in the New Testament, it's yeah. everything. Yeah. But God, your portion that you desired back from right. me was the 10%. That's the test. Right. I passed the test. This is holy. But if I hold on to that which is God's, just like Achan held on to mm-hmm. yep. golden yep. Uh, clothing and that sort of a thing, when it was dedicated to God, yeah. and what happened, the whole nation now mm-hmm. couldn't defeat a little teeny tiny nation, yeah. uh, a little city called Ai, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even, even the name is short. Right. So here they are, <laughs> they, and, and they, they oh, just send yeah. a couple, you yeah. know, don't, don't have to right. send that much, and they get whipped, yeah. and they realize, mm-hmm. we're not blessed anymore, yep. what's going on? Someone kept... Yep. That which was devoted to God. So right. now here we are. If we keep that which is devoted to God, when we go out there to win a victory, mm-hmm. financially or in another area, now we're out from underneath that covenant blessing and covering of God right. because we've held on to that which is God. This was devoted to God. Right. It's God's, but I held on to it. Mm-hmm. So now we put ourselves under the system of this world, which is right. what? Through the ground and the tilling, the sweat right. of your brow, you'll yep. eat bread. Right. And thorns and thistles will be produced. That's the curse yeah. that we're cursed with. Yep. It's not that God says, oh, you kept money from me. Right. You're cursed. Well, and, and this is where I think it could be freeing. So it's not like, oh, I didn't put my tithes in the bucket this week. And I, on the way home from church, I got a flat tire. It's because I kept my money. <laughs> no. <Right? laughs> it's most likely because there was a nail on the freeway <laughs> right, or something right. like that, and, right? But you, you see why that's freeing because the our, our what can sometimes be our, our legalistic or religious minds. Yeah makes it's the curse and, and it's bad teaching growing up in church. It's yeah. kind of, you know, the, the, the language the that we can yeah. use, the air of some things. And, and so it's important to, to live in that freedom, but also understand, Hey, we, it's best not to hold on to what's God's. Yeah. Um, it's not because you're going to get a flat tire or because, you know, but I, I tend to look at life in this way. Like who, who knows what things I avoided, uh, o- over my home, over my property, over the yeah, things be- by being a tither. Yeah. Again, I, I, I don't think it's this magic thing. I don't think, oh, I'm not cursed. Or if I forgot to tithe one week, that's why my washer went down and I have to call a repair person. Yeah. But rather, like you're saying, there's a covering over the things that I'm stewarding right? because I operate under what God has called us to do. Sure. I think a good example of this, okay, so I'm a, I'm a tither, right. Right? right? Have been since I was age 15. When I got my first right. job, I was mowing right. lawns. We talked about mm-hmm. this first job was mowing yep. lawns for my grandma. Made 50 bucks a month. And so five bucks of that every month went to the church. Mm-hmm. That was just my tithe, right? Yeah. So uh, I've been tithing all this time, still a tither to this day, tithe and offering. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't say this to brag or to boast, no, absolutely. But, but just to give people an idea of where I'm at. I'm one of the biggest givers of the church. Mm-hmm. Pastor Jim used to boast, you know, yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. He was the, the biggest giver in right. the church, Right. right? And, uh, and had been since he was pastoring all mm-hmm. the way back, you know, right. gave, gave the church his salary to pay him. Mm-hmm. The first time he took a salary from right. the church, it was because he sold a home, yeah. gave the money to the church, and then the church paid him monthly out of that <laughs> salary. I mean, who does yeah, that, yeah. you know? Aren't we blessed that we right. get to receive a, a salary now? So, but because of that, I know that I, I, I am very grateful. Mm-hmm. And, um, and because of that, I bring my tithes and my offerings. Right. It's a heart thing. God, you're first, number right. one. And number two, I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm so pleased that people out give me, yeah. you know, but yeah. there's not a lot of them up there. Right. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm grateful for that too, because it's- Challenge like, accepted. Oh, come on, <laughs> let's go. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it, that, that, that's kind of where we're at. But here's the example, okay? So all that that I just said, okay, keep that in mind, mm-hmm. right? Now, if it was magic, I'd never have any problems in my house. Right. Never have any problems with right. my cars. That's never good. Had. But I was out the other day, and I was looking at the roof on my garage. And on the side of the roof where I don't normally walk, I, I've got mm-hmm. a fence line that goes on the side of the garage. And so one side is on my yard. The other side is on the mm-hmm. on the, the garage door. Yeah. I'm usually walking to the garage door. Well, this time I was on the other side, and I noticed there's dry rot. Mm. And I just had my house painted yeah. not yeah. too long ago. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, it, it should be sealed. It should yeah. be fine. Now... I didn't neglect my tithe. Right. I've been giving my offering. Right. Why am I cursed with a curse? Right. <laughs> right. Could it be that right. it just rained a lot this yeah. past two years? Yep. And the wood was old? Yep. I mean, the house was built, I think, in 58 or something yeah. like that. So yep. it might just be time for new wood. Right. All right. Come on, Pastor. You know it, what I mean? So it's just... Yeah. And I, and I think it's freeing for uh, uh, the people listening, for all of us, to remember that thing. Because then we we walk around thinking it's our works right. that keeps us. It's not. It's because I read it's my faith. Bible because I prayed. But then the other side of it, it's because you didn't read your Bible. It's because you didn't pray hard enough. It's because you didn't give. It's And and sometimes it's it's speaking to our heart. And I think 
so many of us can work past and and I this podcast isn't to help people get over the hump so they can start giving. Just like in anything that we preach, it's truth from God's word that yeah. we know are principles and truths that when applied will see blessings in our life. Not just financial blessing, but also not limited not to financial yeah. blessings. Yeah. Um and and, and provision and, and because God's design, like you said, prosperity is not a curse word. It's not. We've made it one, uh, but it is not a curse word. And because prosper as your soul prospers, it's not solely talking about finances. Well, if God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, right? why would we not want something that God right. is pleased with? Yeah. You know, I, I want God to be pleased with my life. And yeah. if that if that means that I prosper and I have uh, wealth that mm-hmm. I'm stewarding and that I'm moving forward in life and, and able to have an abundant supply for every good work and God is happy with that, why not? Yep. You know what I mean? Because someone else has a problem with me having wealth. I mean that that's so foolish. Why do why do we care what other people think? You yep. know, and there are the the same people who would say you shouldn't give to the church might be this is listen might be the same right. people who would boast about their new sunglasses right. or their new car or yeah. their you know whatever those things are and and not even realize that they're operating under the systems of this world and mammon yep. that they're bound. And God is saying, listen, I don't have a problem with sunglasses or a house or a car or any of those things. Yeah. Fine clothes, all that kind of stuff. God clothes the bird, uh, the, the flowers of the field. He feeds yep. the birds of the air, right? He'll take care of us. He has no problem with us having something nice that lasts, that's good, that looks good, that we yeah. feel good in, any of those things. It's when those things are the priority and God isn't the priority. Yeah. That's when he has which a problem. I've really been loving this throughout the series so far, and you just touched on it, which was uh, the question I was just going to ask, um, because specifically on the point you talked about mammon. And and I think, you know, and I mammon or this the spirit on money on yeah. finances on things so badly can have such a grip on us mm-hmm. um i look at at music at look at culture and it it all speaks to what can i gather what can i hold on to what can i attain and when we are saying god i'm giving you what's yours first and i want to be generous yeah i can see how it break because just by the act of it it's saying i need to trust you because you know, you gave the illustration of, of your budget and how you the line items that you have and everything that you have. And for many people, the line items would be full before they even got to the tithe. Sure. But now when you put tithe on there and actually put it first and what's going to happen when you're in the red on the bottom, you are really saying, I'm not going to let mammon, which I would say is you got to do all this first. I'm going to I'm going to trust God mm-hmm. first. And I don't know how he's going to make a way. And you did talk about this at the beginning. You said anyone that's a tither, can you raise your hand that you still have some financial challenges? Yeah. Because there are tithers that you get to the end of the month and, oh, man, you had to budget a little bit differently. Or maybe you skipped a meal or two. But I had to meet all my needs. You, you, all the needs are still met. Right. And they will continue to be met. We, it, It's not one of those things because you said put me to the test in this. And it's, I, I believe it's it's a long game thing that we're sure. seeing yeah yeah right and so that shows that it's not this just magic thing or when someone says i try pastor i tried tithing what's your first thought or response to that if someone says i tried tithing and it didn't work right i would i would first sit down with them and say okay show me what you did because right. many times when people say i tried tithing what they tried was one percent right they tried giving right right yeah um because they they didn't understand the definition of a tithe was ten percent mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing that I would I would say is is that you can you can give and I and I, I address this but I didn't hit it this with this emphasis. You can give ten percent with no heart. Mm-hmm. Come on, you can give your tithe and not be a tither, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's that's where the heart God is more imp- looking at the heart than He is anything else in yeah. this. Is not looking at ten percent. Obviously, it's prescribed. It's the number that was given to us. And we talked about that. It's just a test. Mm-hmm. It's only a test, yep. right? It's it's not a big deal, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And I understand when I say that, people would kick against that and probably their 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 emotions might raise yeah. up of, yeah. of either anger or shock or that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But uh, let me just say this. If God is our God mm-hmm. and he owns everything, which yep. he does, and if he's able to create something out of nothing, which he can, and if he's able to feed Elijah... He's able to do miracles, which he does, right? Then obviously, 
10% of our little income is nothing to God, mm -hmm. right? So, so when I say that, realize, I understand it's a big deal to us. Yeah. I understand that, that when people start calculating, especially in light of their bills, which are much greater, and when they're looking at a deficit already before tithing, Right? Many people are in the red without tithing. Right. So then here comes the preacher saying, give 10% of your income, and it yeah. just angers them, or, yeah. it, or it saddens them, mm -hmm. or it disturbs them, or it yeah. confuses them. You know? and, and then to hear, gosh, then I'm cursed. I mean, there's just, it, it's almost like sorrow upon sorrow for yeah. some people. Yeah. I get it. I yep. get it. It's hard out there. Yeah. But really, when we take a look at, at what we're talking about and, and the, the why behind it, yep. it when Elijah said to the widow, make a cake for me first. I, I mean, think about the sorrow upon sorrow. She's already just said, we're going to die. Yeah. That's how despondent this lady was. Right. But in that moment, he says, make a cake for me first. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God commanded the widow, whether that was an audible voice, mm -hmm. whether she really knew what was going on, or whether God just spoke to her in spirit. And she never heard anything, but she had a knowing on the inside. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, you know, because it's just like the ravens. How right. did God command the ravens, right. Right? right? So he commanded ravens and he commanded a widow. Now, obviously, ravens are different than people. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that the command to the ravens was probably from heaven, mm -hmm. just given, and the, the ravens had no clue. They're, right. they're, you know, their soul is different than yeah. the soul of a man, right? right? right. Uh, that's, that's very clear in the scriptures that they go down in the earth. They don't go, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. guys, all dogs don't go to heaven. <laughs> oh, no. I, I know. <laughs> Not fluffy. <laughs> so... um. But, uh, but, but really, you know, when you take a look at that, so what was the command to the widow? It was probably a, a, a voice to her spirit mm -hmm. that, that she had a knowing on the inside. So when Elijah comes and says, get me a drink of water, she just had a knowing and said, okay, I'm going to get this guy a drink of water. And then when he says, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand, and she says, as the Lord your God, whoa, wait a second, hold on. How does she know the Lord? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Had she just heard about Israel? Had she heard about Elijah? Right. Did Jezebel put out a hit on his head and right. say, hey, this guy serves the Lord and you need to kill him if you right. find him, yeah. turn him into the king, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of a thing. So as the Lord your God lives, all I've got, right? You're asking too much, preacher. Mm -hmm. You want me to give you an offering? Right. It's too much, right? But then what does he do? He turns around and says, go, go and do that. Yep. Ma make some bread. But first, yep. give me first. I believe that when we feel like God is asking too much of us, it's almost like, I don't know if you've ever seen, there's a, a picture that went around for a while of a little kid that had a little teeny tiny bear in their hands, yeah, right? Yeah. And they were holding that bear so tight because they, they love that bear so much, yep. right? And Jesus is on the other end mm -hmm. and he's got his hand out. And he says, will you give me your bear? And behind his back, he's got a massive yep. bear, right? Yep. Obviously, God knows he's going to do something. Yeah. And next week, when we hit the next part of the story, yeah. There's a big old bear behind God's back. Okay, yeah. there's something, and if you want to read ahead, you can. Yeah. Um, because you'll, I mean, I, I'm I'm feeling the spirit of God yeah. right now, yeah. just yeah. thinking about no, it. It's what amazing. what God wants to do for this widow? Because mm -hmm. think about it, her husband, who was the provider, is dead. She has a son. Mm -hmm. Now, as that son grows up, I, we don't know the age of this son at that time, but the widow is making ends meet. She's in a place of destitution where they're going to eat their last meal and die. So obviously the son can't provide at that point. Mm -hmm. But if the son can grow up, he can get a job, he can get a family, and he can take care of his mom in the future. Right. He is her future. Mm -hmm. So there's something that happens in the next part of the scripture that when she puts God first, yeah, come on. her and her son eat on it for many days, right? Mm -hmm. The whole household, Elijah, yeah. Yeah. her, and her son eat on it. He's growing up. Something's going to happen. Come on. God has something in store for this widow woman that we're going to see in the next part. Well, I, that's the perfect cliffhanger and per perfect way to end because I, I've seen that image before and it, it just, it's beautiful because yeah. it's like we have to trust that God's not trying to take. Actually, he has something better. He has a better oh way, my gosh. a better plan. If we only knew. Yeah. If we only knew. And those emotions that we feel are real. And, and for those of you that are listening or watching right now and you're, you're in that, I would encourage you to just get a picture of Jesus with mm -hmm. something that you don't see mm -hmm. that he wants to deliver to you and trust him. You know, this, that's, that's why I, I, I know the translation says, test me now in this, yep. but uh, for us to test God out, it takes a trust level, right? Yep. To hear the word of God and to do it. And it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. Uh, you're going to have to steward. You're going to have to figure it some things out with stewardship. And that's why this next week we're going to talk about stewardship. So good. Because like you said, there are people who will tithe, but then misspend or mm -hmm. overspend or, uh, you know, 
um, just go off the deep end yep. and say, well, why didn't tithing work for me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> tithe, but, God for, but then steward <laughs> yeah. the rest, right? Yep. So good, Pastor. Well, hey, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I know this was one of my favorite podcasts that we've done. It's oh, so, awesome. so rich, so great. Um, and I want to encourage you to share, like, comment, really your comments. So in a couple weeks, we want, we'd love to dedicate the entire podcast to just answering some of your questions, especially in this area. We, we understand that this is one of those topics that can really be challenging, difficult, and we want to, as best we can, through the scripture, uh, respond to your questions and your thoughts. Um, so God bless you. We'll see you guys. Talk to you soon.